So here's how Fred Van Vliet feels about the random Pascal Siakam trade rumors. Pretty much scoffs at him. Kings, Warriors, and Clippers are enamored with the guy. The Kings would have to be Marvin Bagley, Buddy Heald, multiple picks per Anderson, who I assume is the guy here. Uh, that's just not a good return for Siakam, especially because Buddy Heald is almost the same age as Pascal Siakam. Uh, now, if you want to include Halliburton, then it starts to get interesting, but the Kings are not going to do that, so I doubt that one's happening. Let's see, for the Warriors, it would be Wiggins and Wiseman. It's not that exciting if you ask me. And then as for the Clippers, I mean, what, Luke Kennard and Zubats? That, that is not a starting point for Pascal Siakam. And then we've also got the Portland Trailblazers. Portland's future draft assets are taking someone like Anthony Simons. Really? Anthony Simons. That's your Siakam return? As for what else is happening, Dragic on his future, Toronto is not my preferred destination. Is it just crap on the Raptors day on the internet? You couldn't just let him have the excitement of Scotty Barnes going off in Summer League? I mean, it seems about as obvious as it can at this moment that Dragic will end up in Dallas some way. And speaking of Dallas, Luka, 5 years, 207, that's an underpay. But it's also the most they can give him, of course. Ben Simmons working on his three-pointer with Rondo. Listen, man, at this point, I'm just not too excited about Ben Simmons' jump shot videos. We see it every offseason. It doesn't happen in, in the regular season, definitely not in the playoffs, so... Okay, cool. The best part about Olympic basketball, fewer commercials? I agree. The Olympic Games went by so fast. Less fouls, shorter quarters, timeouts were shorter, and less commercials. They just flew by. I think the games were like an hour and 40 minutes, as opposed to NBA games, which are like 40 minutes longer. How did Cade get away with being 6A while he is most likely 6'6"? Was there a conspiracy about him being taller? Did I say he was 6'8"? Did I fall for it? I might have. I know Cade didn't shoot well in the Summer League game. To be honest, I didn't watch any Summer League, and I don't know if I'm going to watch that much. But uh, we should not be concerned. I mean, you can be concerned if you want to. I think Cade will be all right. Granted, I'm not a super draft guy. Dinwiddie was asked about his communication with Bradley Beal uh, before free agency would be tampering. Yeah, I'm not going to do a whole video on the tampering thing. To me, it's like everyone's doing it. I don't really care that everyone's doing it. The moves are going to happen regardless. And uh, being selective about who you punish or investigate, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense. It also opens you up for criticism if you're the NBA because it's like, well, why not Team X and Y, a.k.a. the Lakers? And I'm not accusing the Lakers of anything that no one else is doing. It's just you open yourself up to that sort of thing. Uh, we have another Cade Cunningham thing. Is he actually 6'5 barefoot? Okay, so Livers is apparently like 6'5 and 3 quarters. I don't know. Maybe it's the angle. This man just keeps shrinking. Soon enough, we're going to have posts about him being 5'11. Kai Jones with the huge slam. Well, they drafted him hoping he can do this sort of stuff. Goes off the dribble. And that's beautiful. It's one of those uh, classic, like didn't technically dunk it more so threw it in up here sort of dunks but that works on the flip side of Cade Jalen Green great numbers all around I saw at least two step back jumpers that looked really good I believe uh, it's only inevitable that someone's gonna make fun of me for the well the Rockets regret Jalen Green over Evan Mobley eventually that's fine it comes with the territory of the draft and why not take a look at some of those buckets right now? So he gets the screen, big steps up. We got this guy sliding over a little bit. And he already gets the defender on his back. He, like, he knows exactly where that guy is. He knows where the help's at. And he gets right to that floater. And that's the thing, right? He can be a three-level scorer, somebody who can make shots from all over the court and already play out of the pick and roll. We're working off the dribble again, this time once again on the screen. And... There's not a lot of room here, and he has to bust out a little move right at the end there, just to like, like kind of Dwayne Wade-esque to get through, and then from there, he just finishes. Let's look at him work off of screens one more time. Also, I can't get the volume thing to go away. I don't know. Another screen. 
Big guy once again steps up. Little in and out dribble into the step back. I mean, that is, that's nuts, man. Like, if you're going to be able to routinely do that off of screens, I mean, that's just, that's big time scorer written all over it. 